Hello, uh, welcome to Plastic Surgery 90210. I'm Dr. Katzen. So today we're going to be reacting to a story time by Gigi Gorgeous. Hey guys, it's Gigi. Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a story time and a story time that I never ever thought would see the light of day. This is something that I swore would just be buried. I would never speak of. It was something that I held a lot of shame around and embarrassment around. This is the story of my experience of getting illegal silicone injections. On page 132 of the tea guide, I wrote a two page little chapter on my cautionary silicone tail but I didn't really go into too too much detail because there's just so much more to be said so I'm sure everybody is familiar with like the BBL like hourglass figure where they like suck all your fat out of you and then put it in your butt so you have like more of an hourglass voluptuous look for girls that don't have enough fat or want something more permanent or less expensive but at the same time a lot more dangerous they turn to getting silicone injections and a lot of my friends have gotten this procedure done it's literally called like ass shots I know a bunch of trans girls that have gotten it done, a bunch of cis girls that I know, a bunch of guys I know have gotten it done. And it's one of those things where I feel like it's become so normalized, the trendy body of having, you know, huge hips and a huge butt. But I experimented with silicone injections in probably like 2014, 2015. And I was introduced to them by a friend of mine in New York. And she had had a bunch of the procedures done. She's like, oh my God, I know this girl. Her name is Lisa. And what she told me was her and her friends who had had Lisa work on them, give them ass shots in like a hotel. Like the sketchiest thing ever will get to that's such a common story. We have uh, most of our patients are usually injected by a friend of a friend, usually in a house or even a hotel room. So that's the majority of our patients in a minute, but they would all refer to Lisa as their trainer. So when they got, you know, pumped trainer. at these like pumping parties they would throw, they would say, oh, I just saw Lisa for a workout, like our personal trainer, which at the time I thought was like the cutest, cuntiest thing. I was like, oh my God, I'm going to say that I just saw Lisa because my hips and my butt are going to be bigger. And also I feel like it goes without saying, but I do want to know that I am in no way condoning silicone injections. It's something that I seriously, seriously regret. They yeah. So do not, please do not get silicone injections anywhere. Uh, whatever your friends say or your friends are friends and no matter how good their results are or how good they say they are, silicone injections lead to a whole host of problems. So this um, GG is quite accurate. Do not get silicone injections. Have major health effects. They can kill you. They're just... So if you don't believe me as a physician, board certified uh, plastic surgeon, believe uh, this GG person so many scary things that can happen with them and thank god that i'm alive and able to tell my story and warn people although i know certain countries have legalized it but america definitely does not canada definitely does not i know they have like some filler that you can put in your butt that's kind of like lip filler i don't know what it's called sculpture or something like that i've never gotten that done true it is sculpture and uh does definitely work in the buttock. It stimulates collagen growth. Uh, but yeah, many uh, countries have made it uh, illegal to inject silicone. But you know, look, a lot of people are doing illegal things anyway. So, but when it has to do with your health, I don't think it's a good idea. So just please don't get silicone injections. Moving on. So I got introduced to these injections, these silicone pumping parties. I was still living in Canada. I remember the first time I went, I'll never forget. My friend told me, so this is obviously illegal. I'm going to come over to... So illegal. So why are you doing it? If something's illegal and it has to do with your health, I wouldn't do it hotel room when you check in in New York City and when Lisa comes to the front desk we're gonna say that she's a friend or whatever she's gonna come up and we're gonna do the procedure on the bed and I was like okay like this is sketchy but like sounds so sketchy I mean this sounds it's crazy 
you've done this before, then like I trust you. So that morning I wake up in Toronto and I go to the pharmacy, which is called Shoppers Drug Mart. I pick up a few things and I hit up the ATM and I take out $500, $600, whatever it costs. I feel like it was somewhere around there. And I walk right out. I'm feeling so fierce. I'm so excited. I head to the airport, get on that plane, head to New York, take a cab to my hotel, call up my friend, have her over. And she's like, okay, Lisa's on her way. So naturally I have a very athletic build. The silicone doesn't Really have much to like morph into. I didn't really know where it was gonna go. Lisa is the pro here, and I'm feeling and I'm like, I pro criminal feel like this is like bone or like, like just really hard. Like, where is it gonna go? Like, what happens if it goes in the muscle or like hits a vein or something? Later, to find out if it's a vein, it can go right to your heart or like to your brain or whatever and like immediately kill you. That's how girls die from this. In yeah, so you wanna take that risk. And if you thought a BBL was risky, this is super risky. You're doing it with an untrained professional in a hotel room who could get in the vein and you would die in a hotel room and nobody would know. So at least with a BBL, there are doctors and nurses around you. Moment, I just thought that it was so fun, so feminine. I was like, oh my God, I'm having like a pumping party. Like this is like what my trans girl dreams are made of. Like so excited. And this moment is burned, scolded, seared, scorched into so that should give you a hint that you shouldn't be doing it. Memory. Lisa comes into the room. I remember I had like a little juicy tracksuit on. Side note, I got this like really big room randomly. I, I don't know if you stay in like Midtown New York City. Sometimes they give you like really big rooms. So I remember it was like a sprawling ass room. I don't know if I was like upgraded or whatever, but I'll never forget. She comes around the corner. This girl had the biggest ass I've ever seen in my life. And I was like, okay, even if I didn't know she was the pumping girl with like the silicone injections, now I know she's the pumping girl with the silicone injection. She had this like and is that the look you want? A very, very large buttock? No, I don't know. Okay. It was almost like a duffel, like carry-on, like airport bag, but it could pass as like a purse. And I think that that's exactly what the bitch was trying to get away with. Previous to my knowledge, my friend pulls out something from her purse and she's like, this is what I'm going to get injected with. This is my silicone. I got this from, you know, a hospital or where wherever. And I'm like, what? what? I thought we were both getting injected with what Lisa brought. And she's like, no, no, like reassuring me. She's like, this is what I've been getting injected with. Like, this is my stuff. And I was like, okay. like. In the moment, like with hindsight, I just like should have said something, but it was just such a flowy new environment to me that I just didn't say anything. And like, bitch, if you ever fucking feel like that, say something, stand up, be like, I don't want to do this. This feels weird. This feels awkward. Like I'm not getting good vibes. You feel like, you, oh, I'm going to be like the loser if I don't go through with this or like, you know, they're going to think that I'm like not cool. Yeah, just don't do it. I mean, from the get-go, don't do it. And if you feel in a situation where you don't think you should do it, just don't do it. Or like, you know, I wasted this person's time because she's supposed to get paid. But like, bitch, you're doing the illegal thing. I should have immediately said something and I just regret it so hard. So my friend's jar is filled with like a clear liquid, right? And it's uh, So clear liquid usually in North America and South America is codenamed for silicone. Uh, in Europe, uh, Middle East, uh, Asia, uh, Philippines area, there is usually uh, uh, another substance which you can't see through. It's cloudy. So that's a different kind of product. But usually in North America, South America, the clear product is silicone. And she says her friend got it from a hospital. Do you believe that? So her friend said she got it from a hospital. Um, how did she get it from a hospital? Did she go to the pharmacy? No. Did she steal it from the hospital? No. You can't take things from a hospital. You can't really check out things from a hospital. The hospital is not really a grocery store. You can't go there and buy stuff. So how did she get it from a hospital? She didn't get it from a hospital. She got it on the black market or at a local department store. Uh, Silicone, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, whole host of other online places you can buy it. I'm 99% sure she did not get it from a hospital. Thick, almost like, you know, that clear hair gel. Like it just looked like you think silicone looks like. I'm like, yeah. okay, like we're getting injected with different things. Like is yours better than mine? Like is mine like the low grade shit that you don't want to put in your body? Like, or could, can you not? Low grade or high grade, it's still bad. Don't get any grade.
or what I'm doing and you're just getting like the low grade. I was like, I have no idea how silicone works. Then I see Lisa pull out what I'm getting. It's this Voss glass water bottle and it's filled like to the brim with this like foggy petroleum jelly-esque but like more yellow and way more watery. Brings out another little glass cup and starts pouring it in. And if you think silicone, right? Like I have silicone breast implants. I've had three boob jobs. They're, it's Silicon breast implants, completely different. Silicon breast implants are encased in an envelope, which doesn't allow the silicone that's inside it to get out. It's in a sealed container. The silicone injections, you're just injecting the liquid and the liquid can spread throughout your entire body. Thick, right? This was not. She was pouring it like this. And she even did one of these like bartender things to it. And I was like, this feels so weird now. And this next part is total trigger warning. You are scared of needles or you have a fear of that or anything. This part isn't for you. So I don't know what I was expecting when it came to the injection process of it all. I really was just like tunnel vision on the end goal. I was like, I'm gonna have a big butt. I'm gonna have big hips. I'm gonna be more feminine. Like this is just great. I was not thinking about the injection, the recovery, the danger, any Thing. like you just couldn't tell me no and I'm not extremely familiar with like the number of gauges of needles because like the different numbers of gauges mean like how thick the needle is this is totally wrong but let me just say a flu shot needle is a one everyone's gotten a shot in their arm before this needle she pulled out was litter it's actually a 30 gauge needle which is a teeny tiny needle but 30 gauge like a seven like it was thick like if you were staring at the needle down the barrel you could see a hole through it is she drawing the silicone silicone whatever so you need a thicker needle to draw up the silicone because the silicone is thick if you use a tiny needle you couldn't draw up the silicone so you really need a thick gauge needle typically the injectors use a 14 or a 16 gauge needle it was out of the jar and then get to change the needle no nope. that needle goes right into you no so that's an unsterile procedure. You know, when you uh, do that maneuver, that breaks sterility. So you're taking a non-sterile product that's been contaminated because you're a needle maneuver there and injecting it. So you're taking a product that's now not sterile and injecting it into the body. You no, know, nothing. You just have to take the pain. When I watched my friend for the first time get it, she was laying down on the bed, face down. She just had her underwear on like a little like lacy, Thong. Whenever the needle would go in her, she would bite her, her forearm. And by the end of it, it was like bites everywhere. I have a very high pain tolerance, but this seems like fucked. And before I know it, I am face down on the bed and my friend is holding my arm, almost like coaching me through this. There was no rhyme or reason to how she injected. There was no like dots or symmetry or anything. It was literally just her going ham at it. And when I tell you, it was like a pain, a weird pain that I've never felt. The needle going in hurt. I honestly feel like she used way too thick of a needle. Like there was no fucking reason for it to be that thick. I just was like. It had to be that thick so the silicone can get through because he can't use that thin needle because it's too viscous. You just like like inflicting pain on people like what is going on here? It just felt like so much pressure sometimes felt like something was gonna like pop or burst And I specifically remember her saying let's just do a little bit on you this time And then the next time I come see you let's do double the amount and then we'll just do triple the amount And then like quadruple the amount because you'll like stretch out which I've heard from many people also So she finished up and how you close the silicone holes is you put super glue like crazy glue and a band-aid over and I remember being on such a high. I was like, I just got silicone put in me. Like, how exciting is this? These are the pumping parties the girls have been talking about. Like, just so excited. So her and I put on dresses and we went out. And that is like the absolute last thing you're supposed to do after getting anything done, really. I mean, and I remember we went to cafeteria and we were at a table with a bunch of friends and I went to the bathroom and there's like a little secret bathroom at the back of cafeteria. It's like a padded wall. You really don't know what's there unless you like see it. And I remember pulling up my skirt and going pee and I was like, what did I just do? I think the reality had kind of set in and I was like, this is so weird. This is crazy. Like, I was like, I am not this girl. Like, I think I just made a huge mistake. So then I proceeded to take all the band-aids off, rub all the crazy glue off of my skin and start squeezing the silicone out. And it's going all down the seat, all down the toilet, on the floor, you know, like late night restaurant slash like 
like club bathrooms, there's like that overhead pot lighting. The floor is like shiny black tile. The light is hitting it. I could see the product coming out of me on the floor. Just like this like clear ooze. And I'm not thinking about cleaning it up. I'm just thinking about getting it out of me. I'm like, this has got to go. Like I was so much happier this morning. Like now I have all this anxiety that like this random shit is in me. What even was that? Besides the point of it being illegal, I was just gagging. So I get what I can out and I- So the problem with that too, is you got to imagine uh, with the incision from the needle, um, bacteria from the skin can get in that hole and infect the silicone that you're trying to get out. So once you break that seal uh, with the uh, super glue, uh, it creates a, a very easy path for infection. And squeezing it squeezes a lot of it out, but also squeezes it to other parts of your body, like your hips, etc left the bathroom with silicone on the floor. I was like, okay, I'm definitely not gonna tell my friend that I just did that. I'm just gonna act like everything is normal. Cut to later that night, I get home to my hotel room. I take off my dress, I get ready for bed, and I notice all of these scabs where the needles were over my butt. And I was like, oh my God, if I'm left with fucking scars from a mistake that I made because my friend introduced me to something that I wasn't even 100% sure I'm doing, did it, and now it's gonna be like a huge regret. And I was like, I loved my butt, what did I do? The next morning, I'm in the shower and all the scabs just fall off. It's as if nothing even ever happened. I think it was like a buildup of the glue and maybe like a little bit of blood coming out. I was like, okay, I don't know if I I got all of it out, but I got, I know I got a lot out because of what I saw on the bathroom floor the night before. I literally swore to myself that morning that I would never, ever, ever dabble in any of that again. No judgment to anybody who's had it done. I was just like, I am not that girl. I'm just not, I'm just not. Gigi Gorge is dead from silicone injections. No. It can happen and it's happened to unfortunately many or way too many uh, people all over the world. <laughs> no. So despite the promise that I made to myself, I found myself going back to New York for work, for pleasure, and I still was really close with that friend at the time, and I fell back into going to these pumping parties and seeing Lisa again. And those times I didn't squeeze out all of the product like I did the first time. The last time that I did it, my friend came and stayed with me in Toronto. I think I had like just showered or something, but I remember looking at my body and I was like, something just doesn't look right. And I couldn't pinpoint it because the light was on me from the front, from the mirror. And it's not even that like my butt looked like huge or whatever. Like I never really even noticed, to be completely honest, a huge difference from each time of getting it done. I think what that person did was overcharge me and give me less product which now I'm so thankful for I remember walking out of my bathroom into my room where there's like a soft lit like chandelier and she goes oh my god Gigi you have a lump and I was like what and there I'm not even kidding you was a lump like this big on my right thigh between the size of like a ping pong ball and like an eight ball like it was fucking huge and I and that's the product migrating uh, you know it had gone from her buttock uh, down her hip and then down into her thigh. Very, very common, unfortunately. It's like, oh my God, like I fucked my whole life up. Just as I had stopped worrying about the whole ass shot injections, illegal silicone, back alley fucking hotel room, Lisa the fucking workout trainer, this happens. And I'm like trying to keep it cool whenever there's like anything wrong. With We've seen it actually migrated a lot to the low back seen it actually migrate from the buttock to between the shoulder blades, seen it also migrate down from the buttock, down the thighs, into the knees, into the calves, and even into the ankles. My health or anything like, I like to downplay it in front of people because I just feel like embarrassed and I'm like, oh my God, this is like too much attention. Like, I'm like, oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I'm gagging, I'm like physically gagging, I'm crying and I'm like, oh my God. She's like, this is really bad. Like, I can't believe that I just saw that. From your butt, it definitely fell down to your leg. What you need to do, what a lot of girls do is you get really hot, like in a hot bath or like a hot steam shower or whatever and you like roll it out. And I'm like, with what? Roll it out? Like, I'm literally like, a so that's going to spread it even more, you know, yeah, if it's underneath uh, collected like a mass, like a ball, and you roll it out, it's going to spread it even further uh, throughout the legs or wherever the, the ball is.
human pizzeria? Like, what do you mean? She's like, just get your body temperature up, get your body really hot, and take a hairspray bottle and just roll it out. So what do I do? I listen to her again. And I'm just sitting there every time in the shower. I'm like, oh, yeah, got to get my shampoo, conditioner, body wash, face wash, razor, shave cream, and a hairspray bottle. Because right at the end of the shower, I would roll out the side of my hip slash leg slash thigh. And eventually, it went away. Needless to say, that was the last time that I ever booked an appointment with trainer Lisa. That was enough for me where I was like, no bitch, just go to the fucking gym, build your booty in the gym. There's no need to be doing that. This is definitely a cautionary tale for me. It's a no for me. I think the risks overweigh the benefits tenfold. And I'm just here to share my horror story. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's story time. Let me know what you think in the comments and until I see you guys next time, stay gorgeous. So a cautionary tale, you know, don't get silicone injections. Uh, it migrates, uh, it can lead to deformities. And then, you know, perhaps part two, you need to get this stuff out. Uh, so there are a variety of surgeries that we do to take it out. Uh, but, you know, just avoid the surgeries. And by doing that, just don't get the silicone injected to begin with. What was it like for you hearing that these girls are rolling out the silicone that's migrated? Yeah, I think that's uh, crazy to do that. Um, it just spreads the product. Uh, you know, the product is underneath, it's collected, it's coalesced into a mass, and by rolling it out, you're just spreading it, you're diffusing it, you're just taking uh, like a ball of dough and just spreading it out like a piece of pizza all throughout the uh, body. And for you as a surgeon, can you just imagine maybe 10 years down the line having to skim that muscle because of how it's spread throughout the leg? Yeah, so when you massage it, you're taking that area that the body is purposefully collected into a ball so it can attack it and keep it all together as one. And then you're just going against your body and spreading it out throughout the uh, tissues. If you had gone to a surgeon when it was coalesced all together, it's much easier to take it out as a ball as opposed to, you know, it's easier to take something out like this as opposed to this spread out through your entire thigh. Mm -hmm. What is your message to Gigi Gorgeous's fans who might be watching this video? Yeah, so number one, don't get silicone injections, you know. Uh, believe Gigi, you know, you trust her, um, you watch her, she's real, she's genuine, she's looking out for you. So, you know, listen to Gigi, you know, you don't have to listen to me, but listen to Gigi, don't get silicone injections. If you do get silicone injections, don't roll it out. You know, seek a professional, seek a uh, person that specializes in silicone removal. And even though Gigi's not having problems now, this only happened, she got injected in 2014 and then a couple more times since then. Yeah. So do you see her possibly having problems in the future? Yeah, I'm unfortunately pretty sure Gigi will have problems in the future. Almost all patients that have silicone injections do have problems down the road. It may not be for the first one or two years. Usually the average time to a presentation to a physician for problems usually is about eight years. But we've had some patients in the office five days after their injections with major problems. We've had some patients who come in the office 22 years after their injections. But nonetheless, people do have problems with these silicone injections. So from the get-go, just don't get them. What are some of the associated diseases that you see with silicone injections? Yeah, so you gotta imagine silicone's a foreign body. Silicone is not you, so your body makes antibodies to that. It makes a reactive uh, components to that uh, thing that's not you. And those antibiotics are, antibodies are not 100% accurate. They cross-react with other tissues, specifically the thyroid, and you can get this autoimmune disease uh, called Hashimoto's thyroiditis due to these antibodies which initially attack the silicone and then by mistake attack your thyroid. Also, there have been cases of ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, GI issues, where your own antibodies attack your GI system. Another disease that's very, very common with uh, silicone and autoimmune problems is rheumatoid arthritis, where the antibodies actually attack your joints, your wrists and your fingers, and they get very, very swollen. So those are the very common diseases that uh, happen due to the autoimmune cascade of you attacking that foreign body silicone. So thanks for watching Plastic Surgery 90210. We'll see you next time.